Now, here's Ed Bernstein. Hey, welcome. With me today is uh, Seth Schur. Now, you were born here, right? Or practically? Practically Pr born. Practically, practically. Pratt you grew up, you grew up in I Las did. Vegas. I okay, did. I mean, your dad uh, worked uh, with Steve Wynn at, as far back as, uh, as, what, the Golden Nugget? Yeah, about 35 years. 35, and there's yeah. the days when Frank Sinatra was doing commercials That's for, right. for the Nugget, right? That's right. And so you grew up uh, at the Nugget and the, with the Mirage, Treasure Island, um, the uh, the Wynn. Mm -hmm. uh, you made all those little steps, right? With I, I did. Yeah. It was a great uh, opportunity to see the city develop. I really had a front row seat uh, watching Mr. Wynn and, and my father and their team uh, really change the face of Las Vegas. Did you always want to get into the gaming? And I should say, you own the, the down, before I go any further here, okay? You, ha you have the downtown grand that you're operating. Uh, I am operating, yes. Right, among yes. other gaming ventures. That's correct. So we'll talk about the downtown grand in a minute. But yeah. I was just really curious about, uh, you know, did you have this burning desire to get into gaming? Always. Uh, when I was uh, seven years old, I actually had business cards made that said Director of Children's Marketing. <laughs> and I put on my suit and tie and follow my dad around the Golden Nugget, and it's been in my blood and a passion ever since. And at that time, um, when you talk about children's marketing, it was kind of where the town was going at that time with Circus Circus, Luxor, yeah. Excalibur, right? I think I was yeah. a little bit ahead of the curve. This yeah. was like the mid-'80s. And, and, uh, Before actually, that. It yeah. was. It was. So when Treasure Island really kicked off that family-friendly Las Vegas, uh, I felt like I, I was ahead of the curve. And of course, Treasure Island did that whole, you know, pirate uh, mm -hmm. theme, and, it, and now they've gotten rid of it, right? Y yes. Indicative yes, of what the transformation of the town is going through. I, I, I think so. I think, um, you know, we still have plenty of family-friendly activities, um, but, you know, in a lot of cases, we're going after the older gambler, and maybe Treasure Island went a little too far in one direction. You know, okay, so you're eight years old, and you've got this card, and it's kind of cute, you know, watching an eight-year-old boy do that, but... But you kind of stuck with well, it. Well, then the reality kicked in. Even when I was as young as uh, 12 or 13, uh, my dad had me paint a garage in Laughlin, Nevada, and work in human resources so I could see the behind the scenes uh, of a casino resort operation. And I worked in every position you could think of. So what was the, f the first job you had was in, in Laughlin? Uh, in Laughlin, painting a garage in 120 uh -huh. degree heat. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so your dad really like you know taught you the the, the hard knocks way of getting he, he up. He did, and yeah. actually I had a neat uh, analytical project where I got to sit on the Laughlin River and count the amount of people going from Bullhead, Arizona to Laughlin, Nevada on the water taxis to see if it was economically viable to keep the taxis. Now I'm 13 years old, I don't know if I knew exactly <laughs> what I was doing, but later in life I realized that's how decisions are made by doing the analysis. Traffic studies. Traffic studies. Yeah, yeah. in the very yeah. beginning. Okay, so then you had this uh, job in law firm working with housekeeping and Everything. painting garages, and then what was your next step after that? Uh, so, you know, basically uh, every summer I had uh, different jobs. Before I was 21, everything right. obviously was in non-gaming from front desk. At Treasure Island, I worked every position where every pirate costume you could think of, parked cars, worked the front desk, schlep bags, uh, you know, yeah. as a bellman. So out of all those positions, if you couldn't be doing what you're doing now, you know, which, what would you be? Would you be working at the front desk or what would you be doing? Uh, I was a casino host for many years yeah. and I, you know, that was always fun for me to really be able to guide somebody's experience in Las Vegas, to meet people. Mm -hmm. Uh, that was that was a fun job. Yeah, and look, you grew up, you know, with innovators. You know, Steve, uh, Steve Wynn, your dad, uh, Mark Schur. I mean, they, they were thinking out of the box all the time. Um, they, they were, and, and I think learning uh, it was an evolution, right? So watching Mr. Wynn uh, go from you know the Mirage, building Treasure Island, Bellagio, then of course Wynn and Encore, uh, it was it evolved. Yeah, and, and Bellagio. So. Yeah. Not forget about that, yeah, right? It's still, it's still a classic. It's, it still is. So then, when you, well, then you left Las Vegas for a period of time, started a, a financial company. Th that's right. I was in yeah. New York City for about three years. Um, actually, I was in Macau, China, before that, helping uh, with Win Macau. Uh, I did take a, a short sabbatical from the gaming industry. Uh, lived in New York City, had a financial services company, and then came back to Las Vegas in 2006, where I've been here ever since. When you left to go to New York, did you have in mind that you were going to come back to Las Vegas, or, or did you not know which direction you were going to go at that point? I, I didn't know. You know, I, at, at that time, 
Uh, I wanted to try something new. That was my first entree into an entrepreneurial venture, um, which I really enjoyed. I enjoyed starting a business, building a brand, having a sales team. Uh, living in New York City also in my right. mid-20s, that uh, wasn't so bad. So when you came back to Las Vegas, now you're involved downtown Las Vegas. Yeah, sure. Where when I came back, I actually got uh, first involved in North Las Vegas. I had an opportunity to raise some money and acquire what was called the Speedway Casino on I-15 in Cheyenne mm -hmm. and got to do a conversion and a rebrand, uh, which is the Lucky Club Hotel and Casino today. And, and you also was a silver... Uh, silver That's right. Uh, yeah. A few years later, I, I partnered uh, with Jeffrey Fine, uh, who owned the Silver Nugget and the mm -hmm. Opera House and a few other properties. And uh, we, we combined forces and, and uh, created Fifth Street Gaming. And now Fifth Street Gaming, um, you know, is you know, one of the, um, my term, hip, you know, downtown locations, right? It's one of the, the, new, br the new breed of, of hotels downtown. Yeah, so uh, downtown Grand Las Vegas, uh, which we had the opportunity uh, in early 2011 uh, to help develop and ultimately operate, um, it is, you know, it, it's uh, progressive. It's, uh, it's new, it's fresh, it's modern. Um, while still having all of the... Um, great customer service that one expects from a quality property. Good. I think we have some video. Let's uh, watch that it. We filmed it. Yeah, let's take a look. designed a casino, we engineered it to complement uh, the industrial feel, to complement the cityscape. We really do things differently here at the downtown Grand Las Vegas. Great video, but you know, it seems like um, it's a difficult job um, running a hotel compared to working for one. Uh, yeah. a a absolutely. You know, a big part of my job is putting together a, a team, and we have a great team uh, at the downtown Grand Las Vegas, and you know, I try to give them all the resources they need to be able to execute and operate a, a first class hotel, restaurants, casino. There are a lot of components going on. And this you celebrated your one year anniversary at the downtown Grand? We did, we yeah. did. Uh, one year, uh, very excited. You know, over that year, Ed, we, the thing I'm most proud of is all of the uh, surveys, and we look at everything online and aggregate all the different, mm -hmm. um, all the different uh, surveys, were consistently ranked the friendliest, cleanest uh, joint downtown. And that's something that I'm really proud of, and the team has done a fantastic job. How do, how do, you, get, how do you get there? When you're hiring um, people and you want to be 
and obviously you like that. Uh, you know, we're the friendliest, uh, cleanest joint downtown. How do you hire people with that kind of effort? It's a little bit of trial and error. <laughs> you don't yeah, always get right, it right. right. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, you know, putting together a team is, is complicated. Um, it's about finding people that are going to be successful in this particular environment, right? So some people have been very successful at maybe a much larger organization with a huge corporate structure behind them. And others, you know, this is the type of job where we roll up our sleeves. We think, of course, str strategically, but we're all in the uh, trenches doing the work. So there's a difference working for a company like MGM compared to working for a uh you know, like more of a hands-on uh, family kind of environment that uh, you, you have? I think there's, there's similarities and differences. Mm -hmm. You know, we clearly have uh, a very sophisticated, functional corporate environment, um, just maybe with some of the less resources, which is not a bad thing. A lot of people get lost in the bureaucracy of a huge organization, and they like to be able to work and make a difference and get things done. So I, I think a lot of people actually enjoy uh, coming downtown, working in a smaller environment, but still with all the sophistication of a large uh, corporation. And how to, uh, we recently had um, you know a huge event downtown um, with the Life is Beautiful concert. What was it, like a, close to 100,000 people? I, I haven't there. seen the numbers. It it was awesome. I was yeah. personally there on, on Friday. Uh, our hotel was jam packed. Uh, we had amazing events at our. Um, rooftop pool called Picnic. We actually mm -hmm. had some of the best entertainers from Life is Beautiful come and play intimate acoustic sets at our pool uh, for a few hundred people. Uh, you mean, if that, was that uh, pre-planned or unannounced? Or? It was pre-planned. Uh -huh. And uh, it was just a neat opportunity to do something relevant, to understand who is staying in our hotel. And let's face it, that weekend was slightly different than an average weekend. But that's what we find at the Downtown Grand is that we have a really diverse audience. Um, for example, in early December, a month from now, we have NFR. Right. And uh, so we are going to program our entertainment with relevant country western acts, bull riding, activate the street with cowboy uh, centric entertainment. And then shortly after that, you have New Year's. That's right. It's Which a happens to fall on a Wednesday. Not the best day for yeah. New Year's, but people will come out and have a great time for sure. Yeah, and of course, you know, Fremont Street um, is, uh, you know, known around the world for, Absolutely. for New Year's you know, activities. It, 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 it's, it's a great place. They've done an amazing job programming the various stages uh, with entertainment, and we always uh, compliment what's going on down the street. You know, when you think of Fremont Street, uh, and this may have been a little bit before your time, but when you speak to people who have been here, who grew up in Las Vegas uh, 40, 50 years ago, it was the, the street that everybody, you know, went to high school and mm -hmm. cruised up and down Fremont Street. It was kind of a, a hangout for, you know, when you were in high school in those days. And then it went through a, you know, kind of a sleepy, you know, who are we type of period. And how, how do you define it now? Yeah, I think um, Fremont Street, the best thing about it is that it's a pedestrian street where one can visit 12 hotels uh, in the time it would normally take to walk through one strip property. It's intimate, it's friendly, but it's also evolving. What Derek Stevens has done at the D is remarkable. I'm a huge fan of his. Uh, the Golden Nugget continues to invest hundreds of millions of dollars over the last few years with top quality restaurants. So it's, it's an evolving uh, entity. And it's always been somewhat of a challenge to get locals, you know, people from Summerlin and Green Valley and Henderson and North Las Ooh. Vegas into downtown. Yeah. Yeah. We were very lucky. Uh, when we took over the project, uh, the restaurant Triple George uh, had existed for a few years, which mm -hmm. is a local favorite. Um, I think we've made a good restaurant amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and so we actually have a very large local contingent. When the Smith Center opened a few years ago, we see the locals coming, eating, playing in our casino before and after the shows. Uh, for the rest of the year, we're actually offering locals 50% off at our restaurant so that the locals who haven't come and checked this out yet can come and so what do you do you just check a driver's license and, and yeah, you yeah, 50 yeah really off. simple yeah. yeah if you know what the state bird is then you know you don't have to show us your driver's license okay uh, okay i'm gonna be in trouble <laughs> with that one myself but i know that uh i know that when the smith center has an event and you want to eat you better make a reservation yeah, downtown right yeah you, you do yeah. we're very busy but we have uh, prefix menus that are uh, creatively uh, built around the show uh, of, of the month. Uh, we really um, 
uh, get people in and out. We know people are catching a show. That took a minute for our uh, back of house and front of house staff to acknowledge and realize, but uh, we now have the in and out in time for the show. Uh, we have shuttle service. Uh, we, we think the Smith Center is such a great addition to downtown. You know, when you create something like you've done at the, uh, the downtown Grand, um, and you look back over the, the one year that you have been open, is there anything that you would have done differently? What have you learned in the, in the last year? Well, we're always evolving, Ed, and I think that that's any uh, hotel development. Uh, every, even, even Mr. Wynn, who is the, you know, the best developer in the world, uh, always makes changes after the second and third year. So we have opportunities um, to add to the downtown grant. We're in the process of considering building a showroom, uh, adding additional restaurants. Um, the good news is people really like the physical plant. They like the size of the property. They like the look. They like the feel. Um, so we're always looking to improve um, upon the experience, but I'm, we're very pleased with it. And how do you describe the look and the feel of the, the downtown Industrial area? chic. It was very <laughs> okay. important that we did something uh -huh. that was authentic and complemented the urban landscape of downtown Las Vegas. Right. We didn't want to be the downtown version of the Mirage or Mandalay Bay or some uh -huh. other strip property, and I, I think we succeeded in that. Um, really, you know, leveraged this building with its steel beams and, and brick facade, and I think created something that's unique. Yeah, it's, and a lot of these hotels it seemed like to becoming, uh, you know, second. I say second generation. Like uh, you know, you grew up in the business. Uh, the El Cortez mm -hmm. is another property with long time Las Vegas family. Now there's another generation, kind of running sure. that hotel. I love. I work very closely with Alex and Katie, and they're great women. Yeah, and so. When, when you when when you do that, when you get the synergy of uh, you know, your generation of um, of hotel executives, I mean, how is it different than than what your your, your dad was doing? I, I think it's different in that there's a lot of collaboration. Uh, there's a lot of passion, right? So Katie and Alex grew up here, um, and and even though you know, Derek Stevens is a sec gen second generation Las Vegan, he has the passion of collaborating with others and, and changing a city. Mm -hmm. um, as locals, we're trying to create something that uh, there's been a void in the local market. It's why we do the farmer's market every Friday. Uh, it's why we collaborate yeah. with the Mob Museum. Let's talk about the, the farmer's market. Sure. What, what exactly um, is the farmer's market? So uh, next to the Mob Museum, right. in the former bus terminal, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. every Friday, we bring in the freshest produce from California and farms outside of Las Vegas. Um, mm -hmm. It's got crafts, it's got produce. Uh, I believe it's, it's the best fruits and vegetables you can get, even compared to uh, any uh, organic grocery store. Right, so, um, so, I mean, you cater obviously to locals. We do, that, locals right? and yeah. chefs, a lot of chefs, and it's, that's the main reason why it's on Friday, is many of the best chefs in Las Vegas on the Strip come to our market to buy their produce for the weekend. And how, how's the Mob Museum doing? Mob Museum's doing great. Uh, they've done a fantastic job. Uh, actually, on November 15th, uh, in commemoration of Kefauver Day, Senator Kefauver, uh, locals get to go for free. So. And he was a senator at the time that was investigating right. um, uh, criminal activities. Um, sure, uh, and actually the mob, in the federal right. courthouse yeah. in which the Mob Museum <laughs> exists today. Right. Uh, so we work very closely collaborating with the museum. Uh, and we're down the street from some other great museums, the History Museum, the Neon Museum. Uh, you know, we, we're right down the street from the Cultural yeah. Corridor. And you're involved in the, in the History Museum? I, I am. I'm yeah. on the board of the History Museum. Uh, we're looking to expand by uh, moving this amazing exhibit into a larger facility. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's important. You know, as a kid, I remember going to the History Museum in New York and seeing the large dinosaurs, and I wanted my son to have that same experience. Right, because I remember when my kids were growing up and I would go down to the History Museum here, the yeah. only dinosaur you got was a little rubber one about right. this big <laughs> and, some, and some sand that you would bury, right? It, I mean, it'd be yeah, nice to have, right. a, have, a, have a real uh, yeah, We want exhibit. this dinosaur to be able to stand up. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So when you look at downtown um, today, um, you know, obviously it's much more dynamic and uh, we're in much better shape downtown than we were a couple of years ago. Um, where, what, are you, what are your goals for the future? You know, we're, um, our focus is on expanding the downtown grand. We're uh, looking to build a retail around the Mob Museum, uh, but I'm very supportive uh, personally in all the endeavors that Downtown Project and Tony Shea 
and other entrepreneurs are doing on East Fremont, and I think it's only the beginning. You know, for years they've talked about downtown and kind of like hung their hat on the art part of it. Mm -hmm. Just make it like art galleries and get make it artsy, and you know, we at several different times on Fourth Street and other Charleston and different areas, uh, they try to create that. Mm -hmm. um, is that still um, a direction? I think it's. It's one direction. So downtown Las Vegas is made up of the 18B Arts District that you're referring to. It's made up of uh, the Fremont East Entertainment District. We've created an er area called Downtown Third. So much like New York City, you have different sections that are different, cater to different people, um, but they complement each other as well and each focus on, uh, on, on something different. And I think that what's going on in Charleston and Maine, we've seen a recent revitalization there as well. More cute little boutiques, a few more bars. So you're seeing expansion throughout downtown and not in yeah. one particular area. So what is your day like now? What do you, what do you actually do? You, go, you, you walk into your office in the morning. Uh, sure, yeah. so yeah. you know, being one year into a property, uh, we still have plenty of things uh, we're thinking about next year, thinking about how we can further develop uh, the downtown grand. So my days are very busy. Yeah. And you yeah. have a lot of employees now. Uh, we do. We have uh, over 700. Seven, so, I mean, you have HR department, you have people that manage that, that you have to manage them. A a absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, really, we're very lucky. We have a president of the property, Ricardo Ramirez, who's a top notch uh, hospitality executive, and, and he really manages the troops on a day to day basis. And how about um, when you talk about the planning? I mean, you have a five-year plan, uh, obviously you do. I mean, we, you seem to me like yeah. you, have, you have all your um, eyes dotted and T's crossed. You know what, Ed, yeah. we, we, we do, um, but it, it evolves, it pivots based on the guest reaction, right? So we knew a few years ago when we were developing the downtown grand that, da that downtown was changing. There was no playbook. So we're seeing what the guests like, what they would like to see different, and that modifies our plan. So when you say they're changing, how are, how are they changing? I, I mean... At one time, downtown was kind of middle America, people from the Midwest coming into the Fremont Street hotels. You talked about the uh, national fi uh, rodeos, final rodeos. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a market, you know, downtown. Um, people today are talking about, okay, let's look at the demographic of uh, life is beautiful sure. and, and that demographic. So are, are you all those things? We really are. It's, yeah. it's diverse and depends on the time of year, but on any given weekend, we have a wide range of demographic in terms of age, where they're from. Uh, we've worked with some major corporations to throw tech events, um, still focused on the gambler. Right? We have a great uh, a gambling joint, great odds, best promotions, give away really fun cars and uh, cash. And so it's, we're always thinking about how we can cater to uh, a wide variety of clientele. If you had to design a perfect weekend, for, uh, for somebody from Southern California to go into downtown Las Vegas, uh, take me through what you would recommend. Sure. So Food, you, staying, where would, you know. You know, we designed the downtown grant to take advantage of everything in downtown Las Vegas. So I, I wouldn't say come and never leave our building, which was actually the model of a lot of strip Years properties. Years ago. Right? Yes. So you build the mousetrap that's hard to get in and out of. So, of course, we want you to stay at a very comfortable room at the downtown grant, which I honestly believe is the best value in Las Vegas. What is the price point for rooms? Um, you know, it depends midweek uh, versus weekend, but you know, you can get a great room for $130 on the weekend, you know, $60, $70 on, on the weekday. It's very seasonal, of course, um, but the product that you're getting for that rate, uh, to me, is, is a better value than anything on the Strip and even uh, uh, compared to our competition. But, you know, we think that someone comes from California, they stay with us, but they go and explore downtown Las Vegas. We don't try to keep you in the building. We give you a map. We tell you where the various uh, sites are, and we encourage you to get out there and, and have fun. Mm -hmm. Of course, we don't want you to stop at the slot machine or the blackjack table a, a, as well, but... Uh, and where would you eat? Where would you recommend somebody eat at the, you know, at the I, Grand? I, I love Triple George Grill. I really mm -hmm. do. But I have to say, Pizza Rock, this is coming from a guy who right. was born in New York and lived in New York for a few years as an adult, is the bit best pizza in the country. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, and that's a uh, very
brick oven kind of feature? They actually yeah. have uh, different types of ovens. So uh -huh. they create different uh, types of pizzas, different doughs, um, really the best tomato sauce. Mm -hmm. um, they've won all the awards uh, you, can, you can win for a pizza restaurant. So, and they got great pastas and salads as well. Pizza, and where's that? Uh, that is, a, a, it's, so it's a part of downtown third, which right. is our neighborhood. Um, it's actually next to uh, Triple George. Uh, if you're staying uh, in our hotel, it's, it's, it's a part of the hotel experience. Mm -hmm. And, how, and how, uh, how easy is the parking now downtown? Uh, it, it, it's easy. You know, we're very lucky to have over 1,100 parking spaces. Our hotel has two large garages, valet, and for any of our guests, it's free, convenient parking. You know, I know that a lot of locals have a, have a misconception about parking, to be honest with you, and uh, I believe we've provided a very safe, easy, convenient, free parking experience for any of our guests. Las Vegas is still one of the few places in the country where you can valet for free at, sure. the, at the hotel. And you, you get a room in, uh, in Los Angeles, and you're going to charge sometimes $30, $40 uh, a night to park. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it gets, it gets very expensive. And of course, once you're there, you can just uh, live the urban life, walk around That's from right. place to place, up and down Fremont Street. Well, Seth, uh, it's been great. Uh, downtown, the downtown Grand. You know, if you haven't been there, haven't been there, get over there, eat at Triple George, any of the other restaurants, and that, that thing on the rooftop seems really interesting. Picnic. It's a really Picnic. neat entertainment venue. Uh, you know, we're gonna next spring. We'll have entertainment every weekend. Uh, it's really fun. We have a lot of great opportunities to rent space for holiday parties. Mm -hmm. Come and check it out. So if you're thinking of a staycation, it's a good great place, place to go. Great place to staycation, <laughs> absolutely. We'll see you next week.